Hey, what's going on, everybody? So we have a very special training today. I'm bringing on a special guest. He's made over seven figures online. He's an international speaker, and he's the number one builder all affiliate. Guys, we're going to be learning about solo ads. I know I get this question all the time, right? What's the fastest way to get traffic? And that is definitely solo ads, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. So I'm going to bring in a seven-figure earner, James Neville Taylor. What's going on, brother? How are you? Hey, Jonathan. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here with you today. For sure, brother. Um, yeah, we'll have a ton of people on this training. So, guys, uh, we're going to get right into this. Uh, I know he's got a lot of things to cover within this training. So if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and drop them down below. We'll, we'll try to have a Q&A here at the end. But, uh, yeah, man, before we get into it, just give us a quick 30-second minute overview of, of your history and what you've done, my man, and then we'll get right into the training. And, guys, real quick. Uh, let us know where you're watching from down below. Just type in a hashtag live where you're watching um, and we'll get started in just a bit. So tell us, my man. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. So thanks again for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, my name is James Neville Taylor. And after taking an overdose in early 2017, I had a huge burning desire to make up for all the time that I'd wasted. So wow. spending every waking minute towards that goal, I became a top affiliate for a huge software company. And within two years, had spoken on stage in five countries. Um, I'm a multiple award winning affiliate, uh, seven figure marketer and international speaker, as you just heard. I'm in the process of starting my own charity around mental health awareness, suicide prevention and childhood abuse. Uh, I have a book on the way on the same topic. And my main goal is to share my story of suicidal success with as many people as possible, raise awareness around the mental health and suicide to save as many lives as I can per year. Wow, man, that, I actually didn't know that. That's uh, that's a pretty crazy story, man. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, um, man, I'm happy to have you here, and I think people are, uh, are going to get a ton of value from this training. Um, so, yeah, man, just take it away. I'll let you uh, kind of start the training however you want to do it. Um, if you want to answer questions while we're doing it, I can pull them up, or we can just leave the Q&A to, uh, to the end. So however you want to do that, man. Uh, it's it's split into sections, so we can do like a Q and A at the end of every section, or we can do a Q and A at the end. Okay, uh, you should be able to see the comments. So if you want me to pull up a comment, I can do that. Uh, but yeah, man, I'll let you take it away. Uh, yeah. I'll let you share the screen, whatever you need to do. Um, I'm just going to be right here uh, learning myself, so I'm excited. Sounds good. I'm going to share my screen. Just let me know if you can see it. Okay. Uh, yes. I can see it. Okie dokie. Awesome. Awesome. So just check everything is good to go. Um, for me. Someone grabbed your funnel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I grabbed the uh, funnel. Look, it's amazing and goes to good cause. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Awesome, cool, man. You. I'll let you uh, take it away. Okay, awesome, awesome. So yeah, I just want to say thanks again, Jonathan, for having me on. It's super awesome to be here. I appreciate you. And um, I have a lot to cover today. So uh, you just heard a quick short uh, intro on who I am and what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to skip past that bit right now and get straight into the training. Uh, there we go. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to tell you my teaching style real quick. I'm very analytical, straight to the point, so there's going to be a lot of information in short time frames. So make sure grab a pen and paper, notepad, and uh, note down any questions we have to answer at the end. And you can always watch the replay. I always recommend watching replays uh, a couple of times because I can go fast and uncover quite a lot. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So any big online market will tell you their biggest asset is their email list it's one of the things that's been a constant for over two decades with an email list you own it no one can take that away from you you may get shut down by an email provider but you still have the list as long as you're smart and have a backup with everything else you can lose it facebook may decide to get rid of groups tomorrow or your group may get flagged and shut down youtube may shut down your channel without warning and a friend of mine actually got her channel of 200,000 subscribers shut down just because a group of individuals grouped up to report her channel at the same time. And she managed to get it back, but it was a really lean three months because she lost essentially everything for three months. Same with your Facebook page and your chat bot. Any social community can get taken from you, but with your email list, it's yours. No one can take that away from you. Um, everything is important, like Facebook groups, YouTube channels, they're 
important to use in conjunction with an email list. They're powerful, and you should always be collecting multiple contact points um, for your audience. So uh, group, chatbot, but one must always be email. When you get a big list, you can literally print money. Um, some of the bigger gurus can send out an email and make half a million in, in half an hour. And if you haven't started building your email list, then you're leaving a ton of money on the table. So having a large engaged email list is kind of like playing on easy mode. You can easily top leaderboards, you own the traffic, and you can send it wherever you like at will. It's a pretty cool power to have. So hopefully we can all agree here that building a, a, a big email list should be your number one priority. And the fastest and simplest way to build a big targeted list is solo ads. Now, I've been a seller of solo ads for a little while and a buyer for much, much longer. And I am noticing a lot of misconceptions and false assumptions around the topic. So I want to give you the facts when it comes to solo ads. And I don't really share this stuff publicly too much. I guarantee you won't find many solo ad sellers telling you the things that I'm about to share with you on this training. But I want to be completely transparent with you, even if that might affect my profits as a solo ad seller, because I know how frustrating it can be as a solo ad buyer. So first off, a little intro on Solo Ads 101. And I've tried a lot of different uh, traffic services in my time. I've tried Google, I've tried YouTube, I've tried Facebook, I've tried pretty much most of them. And Solo Ads are my favorite, and here's why. Because they're infinitely scalable. They're people who are already proven to be interested in what you have to offer. They're so easy to get started with and so easy to scale, and they're proven engaging clients because they clicked on a link in an email to get to your offer. And they're a great way to get quick results, quickly scale, and quickly split test your different offers. But the problem is too many people expect instant results and sales just from a couple of hundred clicks, and that rarely happens. Solo Ads' main purpose, their number one purpose, is to build you an email list so you can build relationships with the newfound subscribers and eventually, hopefully sooner rather than later, get them to buy some of your offers. And too many people look at it as an instant gratification traffic source like Google. Um, people on Google, they're highly targeted. They're looking for exactly what they type into the search engine. Solo ads are generally not as nearly as targeted as Google ads because they're usually just searching for some kind of MMO or business opportunity. It's nowhere near as specific. Like on Facebook, it's more interruption marketing than targeted marketing. And they're, like I say, they're already, they're, they're not actively searching. So you're going to be reaching them through a different medium. Whereas Google, they literally type in their query directly. But despite this, they're still highly qualified customers because a solo ad seller will deal in a specific niche. So they will have expressed an interest in your niche. So what are solo ads? Solo ads are simply where you pay a list owner to send a certain amount of clicks to your lead capture page. So for example, you may pay $100 for 100 clicks, for example. You're paying $1 per click and the seller will send 100 clicks to a page of your choosing. And the email script is usually a promotional email which will tell the subscriber about your product and try to elicit a click. And solo ad sellers send the email to their list and you pay for each click that comes from the email. You specify how many clicks you want and they use a rotator link in the email to ensure you only get the amount of clicks that you ordered. And solo ads are a great way to build your list, which is their main purpose. Never, ever, ever send solo ads to a sales page. So... Let's take a look at these two examples. Here you can see traffic being sent direct to a sales page and it converting at the standard 1%. With this method, you literally leave 99% of the potential profit on the table. You're only capturing one lead. You can't remarket to the other 99. The next example, you can see we send traffic to an opt-in page and then to a thank you page with the offer onto the sales page. Here we capture 40% of the leads and one of them buys. We have the same amount of sales, but we now have 40 people on our list that we can remarket to. Makes sense to send people direct to a lead capture page, right? And solo ads are a great way to test out different offers and scale really fast if you have a converting offer. But you must always put the offer on the thank you page, not the page you're sending traffic to. And they should always go to an opt-in with a strong follow-up sequence. Now, most solo ad vendors are going to be in a specific industry. And... The majority of them are in the online market and make money online space. And there's so many millions of lists out there, you should have no problem finding a vendor in your niche. But finding a quality solo ad vendor that has a good relationship with their list can be tough. And when you do find one, you can scale them to the moon and back. 
And depending on the seller, the traffic can be quite warm because the list owner should have a good relationship with their list. So you can get some good conversions because it's literally someone they trust recommending your offer. And that can be really powerful because this person's already established the trust with their list. They have a good rapport with their subscribers. Now imagine if you get an email from someone that you like and trust recommending a service, you're most likely going to check it out. And that is why solo ads can be so powerful. But for the most part, the solo ad seller will send out a swipe that they have written to their list. Hopefully they'll have a good relationship with their list and will write a good swipe. Now, I used to think that this was the best way to get the most opt-ins. And this is what most solo ad sellers will tell you. As a rule, though, you will get a much higher opt-in rate if you write your own email swipe. And this is something that you won't hear from most sellers. But solo ad seller swipes are to get maximum clicks to your page and can sometimes result in lower conversions. But if you write your own swipe that is congruent with your offer, you're going to get a lot more opt-ins. If you, The more congruent that you can keep your entire funnel from start to finish, the more the better results that you're going to get. And some solo ad sellers will not let you write your own swipe because it hurts their profits. If you think about it, when a solo ad seller writes a swipe, it's to get the maximum amount of clicks. If, you're send, if they're sending out a swipe which gets less clicks, then it's going to hurt their profits. And almost no solo ad seller will let you write your own for a 2,000 click order or below. So don't expect to buy 100 clicks from someone and, and let them use your, uh, your own swipe because they won't do it. So solo ads are one of the simplest traffic sources. This is another reason why I love them. It, it's really easy for beginners to get started. So like Google, Facebook, YouTube, they all have quite steep learning curves and it can take some time to get used to their platforms. Each platform is different. You can get ads denied. You can even get banned. Plus there's a plethora of other hurdles to jump through. So solo ads are more unconventional than these other traffic sources, but they're also much easier to start and scale. There's no way to get banned like you can on Facebook and Google. It's completely unregulated, so you can purchase clicks from any individual with a list. Of course, this means that the industry is rampant with people trying to make a quick buck from you, so there is stuff that you must do in order to protect yourself from the scammers. And because it's unregulated, there are a lot of pirates out there, people who pose to be reputable sellers but may send you fake clicks or bots and just take your money. And I had it happen to me when I first got online that you get all these scammy, low-budget sellers prowling on Facebook, sending messages to unsuspecting newbies that don't know any better. It's where the bad reputation comes from. Never, ever trust a cold message on Facebook from a supposed solo ad seller. And I bet there's a high proportion of people on this training right now who have had a message from someone on Facebook claiming to be a solo ad seller, um, usually guised with a, a, a picture of a beautiful woman saying that they work for Facebook or work for ClickFunnels or work for Builderall or work for some other big software company. Um, type a yes in the chat if you've ever had some, some random person reach out to you on Facebook trying to sell you clicks. Never, ever, ever trust a cold message on Facebook from, from a supposed solo ad seller. So the quality of some solo ads can be lower than other traffic sources, and this is because solo ad sellers rehash their subscribers from 10 different solo ad sellers lists. So they've already been bombarded with 100 different offers. And there's also some solo ad sellers out there that have no idea how to properly run or track their clicks. Like I said, the, the industry is so unregulated, anyone can just come in and propose that they are a solo ad seller. So you can get a subpar service because the solo ad seller is inexperienced. And many low quality solo ad vendors have a churn and burn mentality. They never build a relationship with their list, which leads to less engagement and opt-ins. And that's why it's so important for not only your solo ad seller to have a good relationship with their list, but you to have one as well. And like I said, anyone can call themselves a solo ad seller. So it's important to know who to buy from. So here are a few quick tips for getting started with solo ads. First, always use your own link tracker, such as ClickMagic or LinkWizard. This will ensure that you're tracking all the clicks yourself. You can see the IPs, country of origin, and plenty more stats inside their dashboard. Second, always start with a small amount of clicks first to test. Test 100 or 200 to start off with before you scale up to more. That way, if they are dodgy, you're not going to be wasting too much. Third, Thoroughly vet any solo ad sellers before you start buying clicks by asking a few crucial new solo ad seller questions, which I'm going to be covering shortly. When you're happy that you want to work with a solo ad seller, you're going to need to provide them with the URL you want to send the clicks to. 
And this should be your own tracking link from your own tracking software. So you can track the clicks to see if any are fake. Any legitimate seller will already have a link tracking software and provide you with a public stats link after you've ordered. But I always like to use my own so I can track immediately. And also, if there's any errors, you need to change the link fast. You can do so yourself by, link, uh, by logging into your own link tracking dashboard and changing the link yourself instantly. And the vendor will usually send you an invoice and inform you when your traffic is due to start. Once it does start, you can track the clicks coming through with either your own tracking account or the public stats link provided to you by the seller if you do not choose your own link tracker. Once the clicks are delivered, a good solo ad seller will usually ask you how it went and may ask you for a testimonial. So I hope that has given you a good understanding of what solo ads are and what to expect. Um, before we move on to mindset and expectations, are there any questions? Let me see. Can I see any questions? You should be able to see them, right? Um, you see in the comments. Uh, um, ah, yeah, comments. There we go. <laughs> I don't think any questions so far, but that makes sense. So, so basically, the best way to do it is to write your own solos. Because I remember when I did it, I would when I first started, I was literally just like paying people to let them write their own solos. But that makes sense because now they're your everything's congruent. From you know your offer more than anyone, so you write the you know the email swipes however they need to be written. So that's perfect, man. I love it. Exactly. Here's a question right here. <clears throat> What's the best way to spot a fraudulent solo ad seller? Um, well, yeah, we're going to be getting into that in just a second in another section. But basically, you want to make sure that they've got some testimonials. You want to make sure that they've got an established Facebook uh, profile. If they've just joined Facebook yesterday, then you can be pretty sure that it's a fraudulent solo ad seller. So always be looking for some testimonials and a, a good track record and make sure that their profiles, their website and stuff wasn't created yesterday. Awesome. Um, doesn't look like there's any more questions, so I'll carry on with mindset and expectations. We'll go into a little bit more about how to spot a fraudulent seller in a short while. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. So, now I'm going to talk about mindset and expectation when buying solo ads. And we did quickly touch on this, but I want to go into it a little bit deeper. And like I said, there's many misconceptions around solo ads. Some sellers may even straight out lie to you to get, uh, to get you to buy their clicks. So I want to tell you straight what you should expect from solo ads and what you should not. And it's very important to play the long game. Many people look at shortcuts, that magic button that they can push and generate instant commissions. And I'm sure many of you have been in this industry any length of time can attest to this. With most traffic sources, people are not ready to buy straight off the bat. It's absolutely possible to get sales on the front end, but it's not something you should expect and definitely not something you should rely on. The main metrics you should be tracking are how many opt-ins did you get and how engaged are the subscribers after the opt-in. If you're sending traffic to an offer and you have zero follow-up, you're literally leaving 99% of the money on the table. You should have an absolute bare minimum of 15 days follow-up after your prospect signs up to warm them up, build a relationship, provide value, and send at least seven emails about your initial offer. Then you should keep emailing them every day. Most people have one product they offer and that's it. But why spend money on building a list if you're only going to offer them one thing? The list is your most valuable asset online. As, as soon as you stop emailing them before they unsubscribe, you're leaving a ton of money on the table. And it's important to recognize that solo ads are not a lot of ticket. Like I said, most people, they want that instant gratification. They want to run 100 clicks and become a millionaire. And 100 clicks will not get you a lot from any solo ad seller. 100 clicks is a test. You might get lucky. You might get a sale on the front end. But 100 clicks is a test to see how many opt-ins you get how engaged subscribers are from that seller, nothing more. And one thing to keep in mind also is the law of averages. You could buy 100 clicks and make $5,000. You could then go on to buy 5,000 clicks and get absolutely nothing on the front end. I've seen both of these scenarios happen. Hopefully, after those 5,000 clicks, you would have at least 1,500 subscribers going through your sequences and giving you money over the next few months, but you may not make anything on the front end. 
And just because you don't make any money on the front end, it doesn't mean that the solo ad seller isn't legit. It just means the people who saw your offer weren't interested in buying right now. And you should also keep in mind that the subscribers could have been sent the exact same offer yesterday. If you're using one of the generic pages a big company uses and they opted into that same page yesterday, of course you're going to see a much lower opt-in rate. So try to use your own unique opt-in pages wherever possible. And as long as you get a decent opt-in rate and an engaged subscriber list from the solo ad run, it should be counted as a success. Sales on the thank you page are a bonus. And everything is a test. We're, we're always testing, we're always optimizing, we're always trying to squeeze out as many subscribers and as much engagement as we can out of each run. But as long as you've got the follow-up in place with solo ads, you're not going to be wasting your money. You may break even on the same day, or it may be six months down the line, but as, long, but as soon as you stop emailing them before they unsubscribe, you're leaving a ton of money on the table. And you should be tracking, tweaking, and testing everything to get the most possible subscribers and conversions from each run. And that only comes from sending many multiples of clicks to your different opt-in page variations. It's also important to note that pages get overused. So just because a page is working great one week doesn't mean it will be the next week. Unlike Facebook ads, solo ads traffic can be very volatile with their results. But when the potential customer first, op first opts in and sees your page, that is the beginning of the relationship with them. So many people think that's the end of the relationship and just try to get as many people's eyeballs on their offer as possible. If you're not nurturing these subscribers and presenting them multiple offers until they unsubscribe, you're flushing your potential profits down the drain. You need to think about how much a customer's LTV is or lifetime value. A subscriber may only be worth $7 for the first week, but could potentially be worth thousands a few months down the line if you've built a good relationship with them. And the main thing to remember with solo ads is they are mainly for building your list. And I know I've said that quite a few times, but I really want to hammer that home. They, the main purpose for solo ads is building your list. Any front end sales are a bonus. And as long as you're building your list with, with engaged subscribers, solo ads are never a failure. So I'm going to pause there again to see if there's any more questions. We're going to move on to how to find and evaluate vendors. Doesn't look like there's any questions, so I'm going to power through. So you should always, always, always start off slow with any new vendor. Most legitimate solo ad sellers will want you to have the best possible run and will offer a few pointers on how to improve your funnel. Never, ever, ever believe any guarantees. There are never any guarantees when it comes to solo ads. There is no way a solo ad vendor can guarantee a certain opt-in or any purchases. So if there is any guarantees, run the other way. So to start when purchasing from a new vendor, you should always ask these new solo ad sellers important, these important questions. And number one, what tier one percentage do you offer? And tier one percentage is the amount of traffic that is coming from the top five English speaking countries, United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. That if you send your offer to tier two or tier three countries, chances are they don't even speak English. So they are simply wasted clicks. And number two, what link tracking software do you use? Any reputable seller will use ClickMagic, LinkWizard, or another similar link tracking software to track links and give you a public stats link when the run starts. If they don't offer any of these link tracking softwares or stats once your run starts, run in the other direction. And number three, how soon will my campaign begin? And a lightning fast campaign could mean that the seller has no orders to process, and that could be a sign of a bad seller. On the other hand, you want to know if it's going to take a week to start if you have a time-sensitive campaign. Uh, number four is when is my campaign expected to complete? And this is another big indicator of whether a solo ad seller is good or not. If they say your order will start and complete the same day, it might be because they're sending fake clicks. And again, if it takes a week or so to complete a 100-click order, they may have a tiny list themselves. Number five, have you ran this offer or a similar offer to your list recently? If so, what were the results like? Now, it's important that the same offers aren't run consistently to solo ad sellers lists. Most good solo ad sellers refresh their lists monthly or so. So if they've seen your offer within the last month, then it will likely perform poorly. 
And this is a huge reason why solo ads are so volatile. Like I mentioned before, it's always a good idea to use a unique capture page if you can. Number six, do these types of offers work well with your list? And asking straight up whether these offers convert well with their list is another great question to lead with. Each seller will operate in a different niche, but the majority in the biz op make money online niche. So it's important to know which niche they operate in. Number seven, where have you built your list from? Now, we mentioned before about churn and burn lists and also more high qual higher quality lists. And the top solo ad sellers will get their list from fresh sources, such as media buys. Lower quality traffic can come from other solo ad sellers lists. So it's kind of a round robin, people being passed from one list to another to another. And they've already been bombarded with tons of offers. They're not as fresh, meaning they're much more resilient to your offers. And then they're going to be nowhere near as valuable. And finally, number eight, do you have a website with any previous testimonials? And do you have the ability to be rated anywhere? Uh, most sellers will have their own website and previous testimonials to show. If not, they're either new to the industry or simply a bad seller. Now, these questions should give you a great idea into the kind of solo ad seller you're working with. If you do not know if this solo ad vendor is reputable or not, start with 100 clicks and check your results. If you get terrible opt-ins or something goes wrong, you will not have lost too much. And any reputable solo ad seller will do everything reasonably in their power to help you. If they're good, you may want to scale to 500 clicks, but be wary of scaling too fast with an unknown solo ad seller, as the first result may be a fluke, or they may have sent the test clicks to a more responsive list before switching to their main list. Now, I know of a huge seller, not mentioning any names, but a huge seller in the industry that used to do this. And he, he, used, to, uh, he used to send all of his initial clicks to their responsive buyers list. And then the bigger follow-up orders of like 5,000, 10,000 or more, they would send to crappy rehash lists. And it's guys like this that have given the industry such a bad rep. Now, it's important to note that solo ads by their nature can be very volatile. Like I said before, if they've seen your offer and down to a bunch of other variables, you may get 100 sales from 1,000 clicks and then zero sales from the next 1,000 from the exact same vendor. Now, I would expect a lot more congruency than that, but it can happen. It all depends on many various factors such as offers they've seen before, the law of averages, and a lot of other variables. And you also get what you pay for. If someone offers you solo ads for 40 cents a click, run the other way. Chances are it's a list that's been built specifically for solo ads, and they're getting bombarded with other offers. It may be recycled and built from other solo ad sellers lists instead of being built from fresh sources and has been hammered with offers. Half of them will probably be tier two or tier three clicks and half of them may even be bots. Like I said before, most solo ad sellers lists are interested in the work from home MMO space, but you can find other solo ad sellers that have been in lists for like weight loss, fitness, etc. So these people have already proven to be interested in what you have to offer. So it's perfect for people just starting out because it's easy to start and easy to scale fast. Now, there's a few telltale signs that tell you if the seller is a dud. First off, most solo ad sellers have a good network, both a good network of buyers and a good network of other solo ad vendors that we collaborate with. If there's a standalone post in a Facebook group offering clicks for next to nothing, steer well clear. And another telltale sign is if their Facebook profile is new. If they're new on Facebook, they may have had another account shut down or are using an alias and are a clear scammer. And do they make big, bold claims or guarantees? Like I said before, run the other way. Solo ad sellers can never, ever guarantee anything because of the, some of the reasons that I've mentioned before. And anyone who offers any kind of sales or opt-in guarantee is a clear scammer that will send you fake opt-ins. And I've even known a solo ad seller who went as far as buying a product to fulfill their purchase guarantee and then charge back on their credit card later. It's insane how low some people will go to be able to scam people out of money. And you won't find many solo ad sellers telling you this, but you should switch up your vendors if you're buying a lot of clicks, like 30,000 plus per month. So many solo ad vendors will not refresh their list that often. So any more than this to the same vendor each month, you risk the same people seeing your offer. 
Even if you do find a good solo ad seller, there can be many variables that can affect whether your solo ad campaign is a success or not. So for example, your offer may have been seen by the subscribers already. You might be able to make some sales, but not in a sustainable way to make profit. And you may not be focusing on the long term and how much a subscriber can bring you in the long run, or the offer just may be playing wrong for solo ad traffic. And we're going to cover that shortly on what pages work best for solo ads and uh, how to optimize them. And it is possible to find some good solo ad sellers on Udemy, but Udemy take a cut here. So be very cautious of cheap clicks. Even if the vendor is decent, the traffic on these sites is usually lower quality than what they send out through their direct referrals. And I won't go into how to find a good seller on Udemy because there's tons of videos on that topic already. But as far as finding good individual solo ad sellers, there's a lot of places you can look. Going into any digital marketing focus group and searching past threads for solo ads will give you a plethora of vendors to choose from. And if it's a good reputable group and someone gets more than a few shout outs, you should be on to a winner. But remember, test, 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 vet each solo ad seller you consider thoroughly with the methods in this section. So how do you know if the campaign was successful or not? So the stats for the first few emails should tell you all you need to know. Anything over a 30% opt-in rate for good engaging subscribers would be a success in my eyes. Anything under 20% and you should scrap the page altogether and try something completely different. And keep an eye on the first few emails. The first email should have a much higher open rate than the others. 30% to 50%, even higher, is not uncommon for the welcome email. If you have a super engaging email sequence that hooks to the next email, then you should be able to keep open rates high for your intro emails. And industry averages for the MMO list is around 15%. So aim for 20% opens on a good engaged list. Again, aim for that, but it's going to take consistently emailing your list good content and emails on a daily basis to achieve that. So I hope this section has taught you how to find and vet your vendors so you can minimize your chances of getting burnt. And I know I got burnt a lot of times when I was first getting started out. So I hope this can save you a lot of money and heartache in your testing and finding solo ad vendors. So just going to check in and see if there's any questions at all. See some comments. Any questions, type them in the chat and I will answer them at the end. So how much should a solo ad cost? Now, in the long run, solo ads shouldn't cost you anything. You should aim to get $1 back for every $1 spent within 30 days. And that's that should be your aim. You should aim for that. But it's most likely going to take a lot of testing, a lot of tweaking, and a lot of practice writing emails together. And that is a pretty audacious goal. Be happy when you're breaking even after a few months initially. And like I said before, solo ads are by no means an instant gratification traffic source. Solo Ads' main purpose is to build a list first and foremost, get sales on the back end with your follow up emails. Sales are a byproduct that comes later. You may have a couple of conversions on a low ticket offer on the front end, but like I said before, it's not something you should rely on. You're going to make the most money in your emails that proceed through the first month and beyond. And sometimes the first year and beyond. If, some, if you have a good engaged subscriber list and you have people on your list that trust you, they can be paying you for years to come. And with that said, if you have a powerful intro sequence, a follow-up sequence in place, you're going to break even sooner rather than later. High-quality solo ad clicks are usually above the $0.70 cents a click mark, but it is possible to find some good sellers for as low as $0.60 cents a click. But it's important to remember that if they're not 100% Tier 1 traffic, you may as well discount the tier two and tier three traffic because it's generally rubbish. So let's do some quick math. Okay, I know you weren't expected to do math with me today, but bear with me. <laughs> if a solo ad seller sells 100% tier one traffic for 90 cents per click, you can be sure that 100% of that traffic will be good quality. You're paying 90 cents per click. Now, if a seller sells 80% tier one traffic for 70 cents a click, then only 80% of the traffic is good. Meaning out of 100 clicks, only 80 clicks 
or actually useful. So that means you're actually paying 87.5 uh, CPC for tier one traffic. So just because it's cheaper traffic doesn't mean it's better. And as a rule, you really shouldn't be paying any more than 120 a click unless it's purely a buyer's list. And a buyer's list is simply a list of people who have proven to purchase something before. Anything under 50 cents a click, and I would always advise to run in the other direction. It's usually rubbish traffic. Now, what's a good opt-in rate? A good opt-in rate, a great opt-in rate is 50% plus, but that's only going to happen if you have a great opt-in page with a curious attention-grabbing headline. Plus, you have your own swipe. You, you're tweaking and, and split testing a lot of the other variables on the page. Anything under 20% and the page is off or the vendor is off. And of course, always aim to get the highest opt-in rate possible and always, always, always split test your offers. But when you are split testing, remember to only split test one thing at a time or you're not going to know what worked. And you can get sky high opt-in and conversion rates by tweaking your offer, tweaking headlines, tweaking um, simple little things on the page can make your, your opt-in rate go up and up and up. And then eventually you'll get to those highly covered 50, 60, and even 70% opt-in rates. It's going to take some time and it's going to take some money to get there. But as long as you're getting an average 30% opt-in from the get-go, you have a strong base to start from. And like I said, you should always be tracking and testing your offers so you're getting the most out of your promotions. If you don't have any tracking in place, you are dead in the water. So how can you increase your conversions? The most simple way to get more conversions is, of course, to get more eyeballs on your offer. So first and foremost, you should be trying to get the maximum amount of people opting in to see your offer. Once you have a good opt-in rate, 40 to 50% or above, then you can go to see how your one-time offer page is converting or your thank you page. And if your opt-in page is converting less than 30%, then focus on changing the headline first, as that is the thing most people will read before they click away. And it's also important to market to your fresh leads ASAP. Once they've opted in, you should be sending them directly to an offer page and an email introducing yourself. An email every single day. And after your initial intro post, sell every day. You must also be testing everything. There's so many people who build an email list and then they're so scared to send more than an email every week. So this is leaving tons and tons of money on the table. So always, always make sure you're emailing every day and also make sure that you're testing everything. Every single solo ad run should be a test to at least two variations of your page. When you first start, you can test entire page variations. And then when you get into the nitty gritty, remember only test one thing at a time or you may not know what is improving the opt-in rate. For example, if you if you changed the headline, the colors, the, the subheadline and everything, and you saw a big increase or a big decrease, you would have no idea what made that increase. So you need to only test one thing at a time. So always testing and always improving. And finally, and most importantly, is to track everything. So tracking, and what should you track when you're running solo ads? Absolutely everything. You need to track all the traffic to see whether the traffic was good quality or not. You need to track how many opt-ins came from each solo ad seller so you can compare. You need to track open rates, click-through rates, conversions, earnings per click, everything. Tracking is uber, uber important. If you're not tracking every possible, every possible opportunity that you get, then you're leaving a ton of money on the table. So like I said before, always use your own link tracker, such as ClickMagic or LinkWizard. This will ensure that you are tracking the clicks yourself and you get detailed stats for all traffic sent, so you know if the traffic is quality or not. You can see IPs, country of origin, and plenty more stats inside their dashboard. And ClickMagic and LinkWizard and other, other link tracking software, they block all the bots, they block fake clicks, and they show exactly where the traffic is coming from. And most good solo ad sellers will already use ClickMagic or LinkWizard and send you a public stats link so you can see all the information. But you have no control there. You can't set pixels in your funnel to track conversions and more and you also can't make any changes to the link if you need to and another great thing about click magic and link wizard is their tracking pixels they'll give you tracking pixels you can install at different points in your funnel so you can track how many conversions you're getting at each point in the funnel from the solo ad run 
And it's a good idea to use tracking links in your emails after the solo ad run is finished so you can track how engaged your subscriber list is as well. If you're not tracking everywhere in all of your digital marketing, especially solo ads, you are leaving so much money on the table. Tracking is what separates the average affiliates and the average online marketers from the epic online marketers. So you should be spit testing your pages, tweaking headlines, tweaking colors, tweaking overall layouts, and just testing and tracking everything. And if you don't, you're pretty much just throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks. You're never going to be able to improve because you have no stats to enable you to improve. Only through proper tracking, split testing, and optimizing can you get the most bang for your buck in solo ads and any traffic source online. Yes, it's a lot of work, but tracking, testing, and tweaking is the difference between a 20% opt-in page, which is lucky to get a sale, and a 75% opt-in page with a 5% conversion rate on the front end. And these are very, very high numbers, but they are possible. They require a great traffic source and a lot of testing and tweaking to accomplish, but it is absolutely possible. Next, we're going to go on to writing your own swipes. And like I said before, it's important to remember the vast majority of solo ad sellers will not let you run your own swipe unless you're running multiple thousands of clicks. Solo ad seller swipes are to get maximum clicks as it means increased profits for them. But if you have a congruent email going out to your offer, you're going to get more opt-ins, which is going to get you more sales on the back end. If you do have larger traffic orders, you should definitely, definitely, definitely write your own swipe to maximize your money's worth. So to get the most amount of opt-ins from your clicks, your email should match your opt-in page. So if your headline is, learn how this complete newbie went from zero to 1245 a day with this one simple hack, then that should be your subject line. You should then repeat what is on the opt-in page in your email. So I'm going to show you a quick demonstration in this quick video I recorded a while back um, on a opt-in page and show you how I would write the swipe. It's really simple. So this is one of the funnels that I send some solo ad traffic to, and we're going to write an email swipe to give to a solo ad vendor that should result in more opt-ins. Remember, solo ad sellers' swipes are to get more clicks, so they might not be as targeted. The way they make their money is on clicks, so if they can write emails to get the most amount of clicks to your offer, it's going to mean more money for them. However, if you write a swipe, it's going to be congruent with your offer, so you're going to get more opt-ins. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this page and I'm going to copy everything that's on the page. And then I'm going to open a notepad and I'm going to paste it into the notepad. So now from here, I can create my subject line from the headline. So the subject is going to be discover the top 10 businesses to make money online with in 2019 and I found as a rule subject lines with all caps do not perform as well because people see them as marketing messages if you put it as lowercase then people will be more likely to click on it it's a very minuscule stat but it does make a little bit of a difference So I'm just going to do this off the cuff, so it may not be the best email, but you'll get the idea of how to write an email. So I'm going to start off with or even better would be Are you struggling to find a proven converting offer? Their name. You're in luck. With this brand new video, you can discover the top 10 businesses to make money with online in 2019 or 2020, 2021, whenever you're viewing this video. And then I'll probably just put a link here. You should inc include at least two to three links 
in your emails that you send out because it just gives people an opportunity to click faster and get into your offer without having to read the whole email and it also gives them more opportunity to click after every few sentences so then you'll put a link so plus you can get insider information on each business model such as blah 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 then maybe another link and you can put something like these businesses are proven cash machines that you can get started with today this video may be taken down at any point so make sure to watch it right now something like that i'm going to put a couple more lines just being congruent and then put link and whatever you sign off with so that's probably not important because the um, solo ad seller will usually sign off in their own way um, but you get the point of actually just making it congruent with the page so people that aren't looking for a converting offer or people that aren't interested in discovering a new business will not click on this because they've got a business and whatever so they're not interested in this whereas if it was a generic swipe sent out by the solo ad seller then it may be completely generic and you may get people who have no interest in uh, the top 10 businesses to make money within 2019. okay so i hope that was super useful it's not too hard once you know what to do and what to say and you can literally if you're not good at copywriting or or any of that good stuff then you can literally just model what's on the opt-in page and as long as you make it congruent you're going to see much better results so next we're going to go over how to structure your funnel and most mmo opportunity seekers they're looking for fast cash they're looking for that magic button and instant riches so that is what stimulates them and it's more prevalent than ever in solo ads so you need to make your opt-in page speak to that impulse and instant gratification while staying compliant. And the opt-in will generally mention an instant gratification headline with minimal effort, which gets the highest opt-ins. Once they're on your list, however, that's where we can begin to break down their belief systems or quick of quick riches and present them with your offer. Some people will be turned off by this, but they're on your list. You can work on them. And anyone that's against doing the work and unsubscribes, you don't want them on your list anyway. Your landing page should be simple and as easy to digest as possible. Injecting urgency and scarcity into your offers while arousing curiosity is going to be a clear winner. But putting too much on a capture page can overwhelm some people and may cause possible opt-ins to lose interest. With solo ads, it needs to be simple, easy, and quick. You should try and aim for using as few words as possible while arousing as much curiosity as possible. And after the opt-in page, your opt-ins will go to a thank you page where you should put a one-time offer here on a low ticket offer to try and break even on your ad spend right away. And if you have an opt-in that gives them a lead magnet, then you should put a bridge page in between that says, thank you for opting in. Before you go, I have a very special offer to show you. So if you're delivering something via the email that they're expecting in the email, you need to bridge it so it explains why you're putting the OTO there. And if you think about it, if you offer a lead magnet and then redirect to another offer without a bridge, it's going to be a massive disconnect and people are going to be like, whoa, how did I end up here? And it's going to turn a lot of people off. So what price point do solo ads work for? On the front end, they usually work for lower ticket offers. And I have an offer which I regularly put on the thank you page for $7, which can convert really, really well on the front end. And it's all about pre-framing. You can't expect someone to buy a thousand dollar product from you the first time they hear about you. And like I said, the main aim of the game is to build up so much trust, so much rapport and goodwill with your subscribers that they don't think twice about buying a high ticket thousand dollar to ten thousand dollar product through you from an email. So now we're going to talk about follow up. And follow up is the key to solo ads. Without follow up, you might as well be setting fire to your hard earned cash. And once someone opts into your list, they're going to start receiving follow up emails from you. 
The first three to five emails should introduce you, your story, any struggles you've had online, and your, your basic story. And people connect with people just like them. People connect with people they know, like, and trust. So trying to make out that you're the big I am and that everything you do is perfect is going to repel your audience, not attract them. No one is perfect. And if you try to portray yourself as perfect, everyone will resent you for it. Now, when someone opts in, they're going to get sent straight to your offer and they're going to get to the lead magnet in the very first email. Starting off your first email should introduce them to you, set the stage and deliver any lead magnets you promised. Tell them about you and why they should listen to you. Share your story and your struggles. The three to five intro emails should lead into each other and create curiosity between them to entice the reader to open the next and the next. So your first few emails should be, as you can see on here, welcoming them, telling them to whitelist your emails, providing value, introducing yourself, and then building a relationship. Then it can go into the offer. Now you should have an absolute bare minimum of 15 days follow up after your prospect signs up to warm them up, build a relationship, provide value, and send at least seven emails about your initial offer. Five for your story, your intro, 10 for your initial offer, and most people won't consider buying until they've seen your offer seven times or more. And I'm personally in the middle of writing a 365-day email sequence with at least one email every day, consists of over 40 different products and services. Now, I'm going to let you in on a very powerful way to promote offers that I've discovered. It's not something you should do for every product every week, but when used in moderation, it works like gangbusters. So first off, you want to send out the product you're promoting in the first email or two. You tell them what it is, what it does, how awesome it is, and how valuable it is. And a day or two later, you send out a bonus for that product. By now, they're already half sold on, your, uh, on the idea of what you're offering. You tell them that you want to kill their procrastination or whatever, and that you are offering a limited time bonus that's going to disappear in three days. Then continue to email them for the next three days, injecting scarcity and urgency into each email. So here's a diagram for you here. You can see there's the opt-in, there's the four or five intro emails going out each day to build your rapport uh, and uh, provide value. Then you've got one email for the offer. You've got another email for, for the offer the next day. The third day, you inject the uh, bonus with the urgency and scarcity. The day after that, there's two emails. I usually send one in the morning, one in the evening. Um, and then the on the final day, uh, it will be last chance. Offers closing at midnight. I'll generally send one in the morning, one in the afternoon or evening, and then one 11 p.m saying closing now it's really short email but you say closing now get, get in now or it's gone forever um you've got less than an hour left so that works really really well and then you'll just go on to the next email which will be building more value or promoting the next offer and it is perfectly okay to email someone two three or even four times in a day to remind them about your offer closing and you should keep emailing them every single day, every single day, and sometimes multiple times a day. I actually know someone who emails their list six plus times a day, and it works for them. I wouldn't recommend starting with six plus emails a day, though, as it has to be done in a certain way. You're most likely going to alienate a lot of people if you try and do six plus emails straight from the get-go. Um, Bradley's saying, yes, you have to be super persistent. Yeah, you do have to be persistent. Um, definitely persistence pays off in everything and it's more, uh, it's exactly the same in solo ads and email marketing. Uh, most people, they have one product they offer and that is it. And like I said before, why spend money on building a list if you're only going to offer them one thing? Why spend so much money building an email list if you're only going to offer them one thing? It doesn't make any sense. You need to email them every day until they unsubscribe. But on the flip side, do not promote a different product every single day. Like I said, people generally need to see your offer seven to 10 times before they consider buying. So promote the same offer for a week, then move on to something else for a week, and then on to something else. Not every single email a different offer, but something different every week or every two weeks. And I have 
five core products that I promote and believe in completely. So if you're just promoting one thing, you are leaving a ton of money on the table. Now, I, I believe once when you first get started, you should definitely put most of your focus and energy into one thing and see success in one thing before you move to another. To another. But you should also have some follow-up stuff and, some, and promoting other offers to your email list. But you, you should definitely focus on what, mainly on one thing. So keep an eye on the first few emails. The first email should have a much higher opt-in rate. Like I said, 30 to 50% is not uncommon. And if you have a super engaging email sequence, then you should be able to keep that high for the rest of the, e the uh, intro emails. And your emails should be broken up into short sentences. So if you noticed on the example we were on a moment ago, you would have seen it wasn't big, long chunks, big, long run-on paragraphs. It was separated into short easy to digest sentences. It's going to help break it up and make it much more digestible for your readers. So a few quick tips before we wrap up this section. Try to weave your emails into your everyday life, stuff that's happened to you, because it can be really hard to think about stuff to write in emails. If you start writing the same generic crap that everyone else does without putting a story into it, then it's going to put a lot of people off. You're going to be leaving a ton of money on the table. Stories sell they entertain people but they also sell products and some of the master email marketers they take stories from nothing from what would seem to be everyday workaday tasks and encounters and they've turned them into a powerful marketing message if you can get creative and look a little bit deeper into what's happening in your day then i'm sure there are lessons and stuff that you can pull from it and then you can tie it into the product that you're promoting so you should never start off an email with this is awesome. Joe made X amount in X days. You blend in with the thousands of other marketers that are doing the exact same thing. Your email ends up in the trash. Try and tie it into something tangible, something unique, something that the thousands of other marketers aren't screaming about and into something into inside your life, something that's entertaining. And if not, you're just going to blend in with the hundreds of thousands of other people who are saying, buy my crap. The market has evolved. That doesn't work anymore. You need to stand out and put something unique to you and your experiences in your emails. And it's something you're going to have to learn and work on. It's not something you're going to be able to do overnight. You're not going to be a master copywriter and be able to weave these powerful messages from every single encounter next week. It's something that takes practice. But if you practice at it every day, you're going to get much better. And before you know it, you will be able to write emails from any experience and weave a powerful marketing message into it. Now. I'm going to show you my first two emails and the thought behind them. So okay, here, this is my email sequence that I wrote a little while ago. And it's, I'm going to go through kind of the thought processes and everything into why I, uh, why I um, wrote these emails the way I did. So you're on my computer now. And now I'm going to show you my first two follow-up emails. So the introduction emails, the first two introduction emails. Hopefully this will give you a bit of an idea of how to structure your emails and a few tips and tricks on getting the most opens. So I generally get between a 30 to 50% open rate on my first five emails, the intro emails. And that's because I create curiosity and I also link to each email. So on this first email, it says you're awesome. And who doesn't want to open an email that says you're awesome? So the first email is, hey, your name, thanks for being here. I have a very special message and gift for you as a new subscriber. But first, introductions are in order. Now, this is an open loop, what I've done right here. It gets people in, it gets people hooked in on the first couple of sentences and makes them want to read to the end because I've got a very special message and a special gift for you as a new subscriber. So that hooks them in and makes them read the rest of the email. So if you're reading this message, it means you sign up on one of my opt-in pages or affiliate pages. So I'm explaining why they got here, how they got here, and what they should expect so they don't report me as spam. I'm super excited you're here. You may already know who I am, but in case you don't, my name is James Neville Taylor, and I'm currently traveling the world, speaking on stages all around the world. So I'm introducing myself, letting them know what's going on in my world. I've spoken in three different continents so far, and I'm planning to travel to all seven continents by the end of this year. Yes, even Antarctica. I don't think I'll be speaking there anytime soon though, unless I put a show on for the penguins. So I'm 
making a joke i'm trying to elicit some laughter and uh, connecting with the reader so it hasn't always been this way though less than two years ago i couldn't even speak a sentence on camera hadn't been on a plane in 15 years and had no personal income in fact in january 2017 i was a video game addict and recluse and i took an overdose to try and end it all i know that sounds hard to believe but it's true so now I'm con connecting deeper with the audience and telling them my story, telling them my struggles. And remember how I said to you earlier that connecting to people on a personal level and not portraying that you're perfect will connect a lot, lot more than trying to make out that you're um, some perfect person that they can't relate to. So that moment sparked something inside of me that made me want to try again. It was like a switch that had been turned back on after being off for so many years after locking myself away from the world i couldn't function in a normal job so i turned to digital marketing and i haven't stopped since so now i'm giving them more of a description about me i'm uh, introducing myself telling them what i've achieved and again telling them my struggles to relate to them nothing is impossible when you have the will to succeed tune into tomorrow's email to find out exactly what i did to become a six-figure world traveler so I don't think this needs any explanation, but here I'm obviously linking to the next email to get them to open the next email. And I generally only experience a 5% drop off uh, from the first email to the second email, which is pretty incredible. Most, most people see a massive drop off after the first email down to sometimes like 10 to 20%. But I only, I generally see around a 45%, 40 to 45% open rate on the second email. And this is why. So now onto the second email. And as you can see, I've got another very catchy subject line, which makes people want to click from the depths of despair. So people see that and they wonder what on earth it's about. So we start off with yesterday. I told you that I went from an attempted suicide to a six figure international speaker in two years. Today, I will tell you how I did it. So again, that's hooking them in. It's explaining why they're getting the email um, and linking from the email before. And again, arousing curiosity because they want to know exactly how I did it. So then I go into telling them how I transformed and what happened and a bit more about my backstory relating to people and so on and so forth. And now I'm dropping a hint to the main product that I promote, which is Builderall. Um, and then I'm giving them more social proof and giving them more reasons to uh, connect with me, relate to me and follow me. And then in this part of the email, I generally don't recommend that you put links in the first few emails because you don't want to promote on the first few emails. You want to build rapport. But this is um, this is promoting my YouTube channel, but it's also telling them to see how far I've come in two years. So I'm going back to my story and relating to people and giving people motivation and inspiration to see how far I've come in two years. So that's the only reason that I link to my YouTube channel at this early point. But I wouldn't recommend, unless you've got a really good reason to, don't include any links or any promotions um, in the first few emails at least. So then again, at the end, I say, tune into my next email for some power tips on getting started with digital marketing and that gift I told you about as a new subscriber yesterday or a new subscriber. So this gets them even more interested in opening the third email because they're going to get the gift that I told them about and they're going to get some digital marketing uh, power tips. Now, usually I don't experience hardly any fall off from this email at all. Once they've got to the second email and they read this all the way through, there's very few people that fall off. And as you can see why I've built up rapport, I've told them my story, I've told them that they can do it too. Um, if you are willing to break through obstacles, stuff like that, I've um, linked them to my YouTube channel so they um, can see me on video, they get to know me and stuff like that. And they're, they're they're quite invested in me at this point, usually. Um, and of course, people want that gift that I told them about as a new subscriber in email three. So I experienced very little drop off here. So there's pretty much all the tips that I can give you as to why this works really well and how you can structure yours. So I hope you can get some good tips um, and some good, good ideas on how to incorporate these ideas in into your own email sequence. 
So I hope that was super helpful. It literally breaks down everything in my first two emails, the kind of psychology behind it and everything else. There's obviously a lot more that goes into copywriting psychology wise and, and everything. Um, but this is something you've got to work at. Copywriting is a very, uh, it's a very learned skill. It's not something that you're, that you're really born with. It's something you've got to practice at. So the more you practice writing emails, the better you're going to be able, you're going to be at it. So next I want to talk about retargeting and this really, really is what separates the super affiliates from the regular affiliates is retargeting. And it's something that's not often spoke about, especially with solo ads. So you should absolutely run retargeting ads to those that don't opt into your list. So if you remember at the beginning when we did the, uh, there was the two examples of the 1% opt-in rate on the sales page and then the 40% opt-in rate on the uh, opt-in page. So you, you can retar uh, you can remarket to 40% of the people who land on your page through the, um, through the email list. But with retargeting and pixels, you can remarket to 100% of the people who visit your solo ads page. So it's super, super, super powerful. It allows you to remarket to 100% of the people as long as they enable cookies, of course. And you can do this in a variety of ways, but I always, I have, uh, nowadays I have literally uh, Pinterest, Google, Facebook, um, Snapchat, and pretty much all the remarketing pixels on my pages. But I would always start with Google and Facebook. They're probably the two big ones that you want to do um, do first off and you can put certain trigger pixels on each step of the funnel so you can retarget people depending on what step they got to so you can run one retargeting ad for people who didn't even opt in and then you can run another retargeting ad for people who opted in but didn't buy so you can you can send them back to certain parts in your funnel depending on what part of the funnel they got to and you can also get into really advanced targeting stuff like how much of a video they watched, how much of what buttons they've clicked and everything else like that. And it's super, super powerful on how the top marketers get such higher conversions. And if you can imagine seeing an ad that specifically says, hey, I see you purchased the affiliate course, but you didn't get the done for you email package, or you opted in to receive more info, but you didn't buy the affiliate course. It's just so much more targeted and people really feel like you're speaking to them. So you'll be much more likely to take action when a targeted ad is shown to you. And the difference between the small marketers and the big marketers is the big marketers, they spend time to set up a lot of automation and a lot of tracking that speaks to each prospect at each step of the funnel. So being able to track on the opt-in page, being able to track on the thank you page, and being able to use pixels on different steps of your offers is super, super powerful. So uh, also remember not to start stalking them though. With retargeting ads, you can choose how often you want your prospect to see your ad. If they see you on every single website that they visit and uh, every single page, then they're going to hide your ad um, and maybe even report it and cause your cost to go up. So if you're doing aggressive retargeting, make sure that you uh, set it to only show so many times per person. And... Uh, there's more targeting uh, platforms like Retargeter, AdRoll, or Perfect Audience that allow you to retarget people on lots of different websites. Uh, Google and Facebook, on their audience networks, they have a huge uh, retargeting platform, but there's other ones that you can retarget on as well to expand that even further. And um, there's tons of different retargeting platforms. Um, I have LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, Bing, um, Reddit, Pinterest, and a few others set up. So you can see how powerful this is. And I don't see anyone talking about this right here, the power you have to be able to reach 100% of the people who see your page without them having to opt in is huge. And being able to reach people across the web with reminders about your opt-in page, OTO, or any other kind of offer is huge as well. And um, I can't count the times that I've reached out to people in Messenger, reminding them about something. And they say, oh, yeah, I completely forgot about that. And they went on to buy, you know. Life can get in the way for uh, various reasons. And sometimes people are on the move after they click your email. 70% um, of plus of traffic is now mobile. So they could be about to walk into a store when they're about to opt in. They could get into the store, drop their mobile in the pocket, and the opt-in is lost. But with retargeting, you have a chance to catch them again. And what I really love about retargeting as well is retargeting ads are super cheap. Um, compared to other ads. If you're running generic Facebook ads to a big, broad audience, 
then you're going to be paying a lot more per click than if you run a super targeted retargeting campaign. And um, so imagine this, you buy a thousand clicks and on average 300 or 400 people opt in. Now you have 300 people going through your sequences, um, viewing your offers each day. But with retargeting, you can then target the other six or 700 to come back and opt in. And many of them, they may have just got busy at the time they were, they were going to opt in. So I hope you can see how powerful retargeting is because it is definitely an underutilized and seldom discussed golden nugget. So if there's one thing you can get out of this training, it's always, always, always have retargeting stuff on and always track as well, always track, tweak, and test. So um, just added this at the end, just in case you didn't know what any of these terms meant. So if you want to take a little screenshot of that, um, open rate is the percentage of people who open your emails. Click-through rate is your click-through rate, the amount of people who click on links in your emails. Earnings per click is the amount of money that is made per click to your offer. So, for example, 100 people click to your offer, you make one sale, that's an EPC of $1. If the, uh, if the clicks were uh, $1, uh, $100 for 100 clicks. Um, CPC is cost per click, how much each click costs you. ACV is average cart value, which is the average amount that people spend on a transaction. ROI is return on investment, how much return you get after your investment and LTV, lifetime value of a customer, how much a customer is worth to you. So when you get a big list, you can literally print money. Like I said, I have a personal email list of over 25,000. And once you get a big list, you can, you can pretty much print money. You can, uh, you can um, just send an email and you can, you can get on the leaderboards of most um most uh most competitions and my solo ads list is much much bigger than that this is my personal list and um some of the big gurus can literally pull in half a million dollars in an hour when they email their list it's insane so always build your email list realize that a subscriber may be worth tens of thousands down the road if you treat them right and there's no faster way to build a huge subscriber list than solo ads when you are first starting out so with that said that's the end of my presentation I hope that it was super, super valuable and you guys learned a lot. If there's any questions, um, shoot away. Yeah, man, that was extremely in-depth. That was awesome, man. I really love how you even put in the copywriting, your story, and even retargeting. Like That's all stuff that, like you said, it separates the five, six-figure affiliates from the seven. So I love that, man. I really, really mm -hmm. appreciate you coming on. Yeah, there's no, been a few no questions. Uh, what was that? No problem at all. Happy to be here. And yeah, it is a seldom discussed thing. Uh, I don't see anyone discussing the retargeting stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so that's a super, super golden nugget there. Well, I see the retargeting, uh, you know, if you're setting up your tracking, right? Like, especially with YouTube uh, retargeting or Google, it's almost like an email list, these buckets of, or, you know, these buckets of audiences, right? Where you can retarget uh, later on using Google and, and Facebook or whatever you're doing. But um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a few comments here. Um, I don't know if you, I mean, you can kind of answer the ones you want here. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, that was so helpful. I believe that's my brother, actually. So he, awesome. <laughs> yeah, he, he's actually brand, brand new to this. So um, I think he has a few questions here. But you can kind of go ahead and answer uh, whatever you want. And I know you have to go. Uh, you, have a, you have a time limit. So you can answer whatever you want to yeah. do. Um, Go ahead, man. I'll stay for another five or so minutes, and then, yeah, I've got uh, another thing happening soon. So, Okay, perfect, man. Go ahead and uh, just pick a comment, and I'll throw it up. Uh, someone says, where do you find tier one? So that will be advertised by the seller on their website or when you speak to them. Um, that, this is uh, something that you can just ask. I, I personally provide 100% tier one traffic myself. I don't see the point of offering anything less than that because the other clicks are generally – not going to lead anywhere it, tier two and tier three clicks they most probably can't even speak english so what's the point of sending clicks yeah. when uh, when they can't even understand you mm -hmm. love it um uh so let's say you spend two thousand or two thousand email addresses you get 25 percent opt-in rate 500 customers cost of four dollars per lead how long would it generally take given i do everything I should do to get back the four dollars per lead um there's no good way to answer that um like i said 
in the nearer the beginning, you should expect to kind of make your money back within a few months. Um, but that's not always the case. Um, but as long as you're getting a engaged subscriber list, as long as you're building up that list and you keep sending them congruent offers and keep building up that relationship with them, then you're going to break even eventually. Um, cause like I said before, some, some subscribers, they can be worth $7 in the first week, but they may be worth thousands down the line if you treat them right. Um, which is why I wanted to hammer so hard on the main reason for solo ads is building your list, building up that, uh, that relationship with them and then keeping emailing them every day to keep that relationship high so they can keep buying from you. So it's impossible to answer that. It could be a month. A month is a great one to, uh, to, uh, go for. Um, it could be six months. It could be a year and a half. Um, it depends how many people you, uh, uh, how many people you convert. Yeah. I love that, man. Uh, any recommendations on your story as a newbie? Um, that's quite a tough one. I mean, it's just, just sharing your experiences. I mean, everyone, Everyone has their own unique experiences. Everyone has their own story. And it doesn't just have to be your story about uh, online marketing. Um, I mean, before I shared my story, I didn't think I had a story to tell. Um, I didn't think I, I had any value to give on my story. But it turns out I have a heck of a lot of value to give with my story. So no one thinks they, can, they have a good story to share. No one thinks they have that value to share. But I promise if you dig deep and look into stuff, then you'll, you'll definitely have some value to share. And also it can, it can be people relate to people like them. So you, you, your story, for example, could be you spent 10 years in a job, you were underappreciated, you worked your butt for a boss for 10 years and um, you never got anywhere. And now I'm just starting my journey um, to, 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 to online marketing and, and, uh, and starting. So it doesn't, you don't have to have results to share your story. You can just share your experiences and, and your story so far and Honestly, if, if, I was, if I was back where I was now, I would document everything. Mm. I wish that I had documented everything from, from start to finish because people love to follow you on that journey. You're going to get people following you um, and cheer you on. You're going to get some people following you to, to see you fail. You're going to get people just following you the yeah. entire time, and some mm. of them are, are, are turning to buy it. So uh, my, my point is everyone has a story to share, and you should just share as much as you're willing to from the heart. Yeah, and I, I love that, man, because uh, when I first started, I had no results. And um, something I get that I get that question all the time, like, how do we show results when we don't have any? It's all about documenting the journey. You know, your first opt in, your first view on YouTube, your first sale, like everything, you know, those initial 100, 200 people that follow you, those are those are your best customers later on as you grow and grow. So, yeah, I love that, man. Great, great uh, question and answer. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Kobe says, how long did it take you to acquire that list? Um, I've been marketing since 2017. Um, I got started to see some results after about six months. Um, but my most, uh, most of my, uh, results have come in the last year. Um, it's wow. funny when you first get started, you, you, you're kind of on a slow trajectory. It doesn't go up very fast. And then when you start seeing results, it gets incrementally, uh, uh, higher and higher so a lot of my results have come in the last year and and that's where i've built up most of my list is within the last year it's incredible man awesome thank you uh where do you get quality solo ads because i was scammed um so if you want to go back to this video you can see some of my uh some of my kind of solo ad questions to make sure you're you're not starting with a dud um, I myself sell solo ads, um, and I know of some other sellers as well that I use that I'm happy to share um, as well. Awesome. Man. Yeah, I was going to actually mention that. Um, I would actually like to purchase some solo ads for, from you, um, you know, for my three-day challenge. Is that something we could do? But if I use, um, like, I would probably, based on your training, I would probably use a different landing page, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can do something like that. Absolutely. And yeah, the the the, the pages that work the best are very very simple, very very uh, mm -hmm. very, very straight to the point. So um, my my best converting one literally just has five or six words as the headline, uh, ten or so words as the subheadline, and then an opt in, and that's it. That works. That's what works best for solo ads. 
Yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, I mean, if you want to go back and, uh, or I can go back and add your link on where to buy your solo ads, or we can throw it on right now, however you want to do that, because I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that want to buy it. Um, I'll, I'll definitely be a customer for sure. So, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll get you the link for that. No worries. Um, so, yeah, uh, soloads.tailoryourbestlife.com is my main website. Okay. For traffic. Cool. If you want to shoot it to me in Messenger or whenever, I can throw it up. Um, yeah, no worries. And then, um, let me see here. Um, um. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions. Uh, one from Kobe, when emailing people, you were saying that you don't send links right away. How much discourse do you have trying to relate to people before you start trying to sell whatever product it is? Um, so yeah, if you check out the replay of this, it's usually like five or six emails. Um, to begin with, you introduce your story, you build some relationships and stuff like that. Um, so if you can go back on this video to the part of, um, uh, after the opt-ins, that will tell you everything you need to know about that. Um, so I'm going to have to go now. I don't see any more questions. Uh, I think you're muted. I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, yeah. Go ahead and do what you got to do, man. I really appreciate you getting on. I believe someone just posted, uh, Kenny just posted the comment. Is that, does that look right? Soloads.tailoryourbestlife.com? Yep. That's the one. That okay. is perfect. I will go um, through you guys and uh, I will add the links as well later on. Um, but thank you so much for getting on, brother. I know you got to go. So thank you so much. You went, you went so in depth into this. And, uh, you know, I'm sure people are going to be wanting to, check you out where can we check you out and uh you know obviously buy solo ads from you but more importantly follow your journey where can we do that at uh yeah i've actually got a new group uh at the moment a new kind of funnel a new system that i've put together which is growing quite rapidly at the moment um called the rapid profit machine so if you search that in facebook you should see the group rapid profit machine um we actually do training in there every wednesday on different uh topics actually jonathan just came in uh, last week and did a training on YouTube. So there's a bunch of awesome super value in there. So, uh, yeah, rapid profit machine is the best place to, uh, get in right now and, uh, and connect with me. Awesome, brother. Well, I'll get with you. Uh, I can't wait to promote your program as well and use your solo ads because, uh, guys, he's got an awesome program where he has multiple things where all in one funnel, the rapid profit machine, go check that out. Thank you, uh, James so much. And, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Later, awesome. man. Thanks so much. Of course.